Kumpulan Wang Persaraan di Perbadankan or Coop is hoping to achieve a gross fund size of 200 billion by 2025, according to Finance Minister Tunku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz. He announced this target as he launched Coop's three year program, Teras 5, that spans from 2022 to 2024. Notably, Coop has achieved a record fund size of approximately 159 billion as at end 2021, a threefold increase from its 41.9 billion worth of funds back when it was established in 2007. Zafrul said Coop Coop also aims to increase the number of its property assets from 17 to more than 30 and to own more than 35 subsidiaries by 2025. Teras 5 is part of Coop's long-term transformation plan to support sustainable growth to benefit pensioners. Coop CEO Nick Amlizan Mohamed said that Teras 5 was fully developed by the Coop team itself and it did not involve the appointment of external consultants, proving the fund's talent capability. Meanwhile, after achieving about 6% return per annum from its investments in the past years, Nick Amlizan says the fund is now pushing for 7% return per annum via its Duras 5 plan. She says Coop's plan includes enlarging its asset allocation towards the private market, as well as increasing its foreign investments. Currently, 90% of the fund's investments are in the public market, including listed equity and fixed income, while 10% is in the private market. Coop says it intends to raise the percentage of its private market investments to 20% by 2025. Nick Amlizan says that for the private market, there are three asset classes, namely private equity, infrastructure and property. While she acknowledges that there would be additional risks as information from the private market is not publicly available, she assured that Teras 5 will help in managing those risks. Frasier and Neve Holdings saw its third quarter earnings come in flat as it posted a net profit of 97.5 million compared with the 96.16 million it recorded last year. Revenue for the quarter rose 5.5% to 1.19 billion thanks to a mix of positive momentum from the recovery of economic activities, strong festive sales, and price adjustments. On its prospects, FNN said headwinds such as ongoing supply chain disruptions, raw material shortages, high input prices, and geopolitical uncertainty will continue to put pressure on margins until the fourth quarter of FY22. Additionally, rising inflation alongside the depreciation of the ringgit and the Thai baht versus the US dollar will add further cost pressures, although the impact will be mitigated partially by its export receipts which are in US dollars. Even so, FNN remains confident of its future plans to hold on to its market share that would enable it to add new product offerings and improve its line. This includes the completion of its ASRS warehouse in Shah Alam, its drinking water production plant at KKIP, its new liquid milk and plant-based beverages factory in Thailand, and adding capability for plant-based beverages at its Pulau Inda plant by end 2022. FNN says its latest proposed acquisition of Ladang Permai Damai and proposed privatisation of Coco Land Holdings will also help to drive its future growth prospects. The Malaysian Rubber Glove Manufacturers Association has lowered its 2022 projection for global glove demand to about 399 billion pieces from its previous estimate of 452 billion pieces. MAMA President Dr S. Subramaniam says its previous 2022 global glove demand forecast had taken into consideration earlier during the year the potential risk from the outbreak of the COVID-19 Omicron variant. He says that since most of these risks have come under control, it was why the numbers needed to be reassessed. Subramaniam says its new 2022 forecast translates into an annual glove demand growth of between 10 and 12%. For 2023, he says Magma expects global annual glove demand growth to improve further between 12 and 15%. He explains that glove manufacturing will still be a profitable business as under normal circumstances, annual global demand growth stands at around 15%. Subramaniam says Malaysia, which is estimated to produce 240 billion pieces of gloves in 2022, is expected to have a 65% share of the global rubber glove market, followed by China, Thailand and Indonesia. Nonetheless, he expects the Malaysian glove industry's outlook to be tough in the next six to nine months in terms of production capacity utilisation and glove average selling prices. He adds that Magma members have so far automated about 85% of their glove production operations and that it will take them another three to four years to automate 95% of their operations. Thank you. 
ILB Group's Mayanti shareholder BT Investment Capital has filed a lawsuit against the logistics services company and its board members in an attempt to block an acquisition that could dilute shares owned by existing shareholders. In an originating summons filed by a low buck tech on behalf of BTIC on August 2nd, it named nine defendants of ILB, which was formerly known as Integrated Logistics. They are Chairman Datuk Karo Nakaran alias Karu Nakaran Ramasami, CEO T. Tuan Sem, ED Makoto Takahashi, known executive directors Wan Asfa Wan Anwa, Datuk Wan Hashim Wan Juso, Song Eng Hui and Jamila Kamal, as well as Impian Nuri. It filed an application seeking a hearing at the Shah Alam High Court on August 17th to stop or cancel the proposed acquisition by ILB of nine parcels of commercial land with shop plots in Section 19 Petaling Jaya for 15.9 million ringgit via the issuance of 37.78 million new ILB shares. In a separate statement, BTIC said the proposed issuance will enlarge the number of issued shares to 232.81 million from the current 195.03 million. BTIC claimed that the move does not create value for shareholders as ILB's earnings per share and any dividends, rights, allotments or other distributions that ILB may declare will be negatively impacted. At the same time, the proposed transaction will create a new single largest shareholder in the form of the seller of the commercial parcel Impian Nuri, which will have a 16.7% stake in ILB post-acquisition. According to ILB's 2021 annual report, its CEO T is the single largest shareholder with a 15.9% stake. Petronas's 2022 Fortune Global 500 ranking rose to 216 from 277 in 2021, according to the latest updates on Fortune Media's website. Petronas, the country's only Fortune Global 500 company, has spent 26 years on the Fortune Global 500 ranking. The national oil company has total assets of 152.5 billion US dollars and employs more than 46,000 people across the globe as of last year, according to the Fortune entry. Meanwhile, Indonesia's state oil and natural gas corporation PT Pertamina ranked at 223, while Thailand's state-owned oil company PTT Public Co. is ranked at 177. Among the global energy companies, Russia's Gazprom topped the list with its ranking at 52, followed by Finnish state-owned energy company Fortum and European electric utility company E.ON. In a statement, Fortune announced that Walmart is ranked first again for the ninth year running and the 17th time since 1995. Saudi Aramco reclaims its title as the world's most profitable company with 105 billion US dollars in earnings. 